Hi everyone, welcome to Short True Crime and today we're going to be looking into David Ray Parker, also known as the Toy Box Killer. David, also known as the Toy Box Killer, was a serial killer and rapist who kidnapped, raped and tortured dozens of women from approximately the mid-80s to 1999. He was finally captured after his final victim managed to escape and run down the highway in nothing but a dog collar. Ray's crimes were particularly heinous. He had a torture chamber in his trailer home that he called his toy box. There he would chain up his victims and subject them to unspeakable acts of violence and sexual abuse. He would often play a cassette tape with a recording detailing what his victims would be forced to endure. The toy box killer case is significant because it highlights the importance of law enforcement agencies working together to solve crimes it took the cooperation of multiple agencies across several states to bring Ray to justice. David was born on November 6, 1939 in Belen, New Mexico. He was raised by his grandfather and saw his father on a regular basis who beat him. Ray was bullied by his peers for his shyness around girls which drove him to drink and abuse drugs. David, the man behind the horrifying crimes known as the Toy Box Killer, exhibited a complex and disturbing psychological profile that sheds light on the depths of human depravity. While the full extent of his motives and psychological makeup may never be fully understood, certain aspects of his personality offer an insight into his actions. Ray displayed narcissistic tendencies, using manipulation and control to assert dominance over his victims. His ability to gain their trust and exploit their vulnerabilities is indicative of his manipulative skills. Ray's crimes were marked by sadistic tendencies deriving pleasure from the pain and suffering he inflicted on his victims. This need for power and control over others likely fueled his actions, with his toy box acting as a physical manifestation of his desire to dominate. The elaborate fantasies Ray constructed as evident in his audio tapes and photographs suggest a deep immersion into the twisted reality of his own making. This highlights a detachment from the norms of society and an intense need to create an alternate world to dissatisfy his desires. The careful planning that went into constructing the toy box and his meticulous methods of controlling victims demonstrated Ray's need to exert dominance. The fact that he recorded the sessions indicates his desire to relive and maintain control over these experiences. Ray's criminal activities escalated over time with each act becoming progressively more heinous. The escalation can be indicative of a need for greater stimulation or a deeper satisfaction of his sadistic desires. Ray's interests such as BDSM and bondage were taken to an extreme and non-consensual levels. This illustrates a distortion of normal sexual interests where he used his fantasies as a means of exerting power over his victims. In exploring Ray's personality and psychological profile, it becomes clear that he was a deeply disturbed individual who was harboured deviant desires and a willingness to inflict unimaginable pain on others. His actions reflect a complex interplay of power, control, sadism and detachment from societal norms, offering a chilling glimpse into the darkest corners of human psychology. David Parker Ray was born on November 6, 1939 in Belen, New Mexico. He was raised by his grandfather and saw his father on a regular basis who beat him. Ray was bullied for, by his peers for his shyness around girls, which drove him to drink and drugs. David Parker Ray, the man behind the horrifying crimes known as the Toy Box Killer, exhibited a complex and disturbing psychological profile that sheds light on the depths of human depravity. While the full extent of his motives and psychological makeup may never be fully understood, certain aspects of his personality offer insight into his actions. Ray displayed narcissistic tendencies using manipulation and control to assert dominance over his victims. His ability to gain their trust and then exploit their vulnerabilities is indicative of his manipulation skills. Ray's crimes were marked by sadistic tendencies, deriving pleasure from the pain and suffering he inflicted on his victims. This need for power and control over others likely fueled his actions with the toy box acting as a physical manifestation of his desire to dominate. The elaborate fantasies that Ray constructed, as evident in his audio tapes and photographs, suggest a deep immersion into a twisted reality of his own making. 
This highlights a detachment from the norms of society and an intense need to create an alternate world to satisfy his desires. This careful planning that went into constructing the toy box and his meticulous methods of controlling victims demonstrated Ray's need to exert dominance. The fact that he recorded the sessions indicates his desire to relive and maintain control over these experiences. Ray's criminal activities escalated over time, with each act becoming progressively more heinous. This escalation can be indicative of a need for greater stimulation or a deeper satisfaction of his sadistic desires. Ray's interests such as BDSM and bondage were taken to an extreme and non-consensual level. This illustrates a distortion of normal sexual interests where he used his fantasies as a means of exerting power over his victims. In exploring Ray's personality and psychological profile, it becomes clear that he was a deeply disturbed individual who harboured deviant desires and a willingness to inflict unimaginable pain on others. His actions reflect a complex interplay of power, control, sadism and detachment from societal norms, offering a chilling glimpse into the darkest corners of human psychology. His criminal history began with the relatively minor offences, including burglary and theft. These early actions laid the groundwork for his later, more sinister activities. Ray's criminality escalated as he transitioned from property crimes to more violent acts. He began to target women for abduction and sexual assault, demonstrating an increase in disregard for the well-being of his victims. One of the most significant turning points was the construction of the, his infamous toy box, a soundproof chamber mm -hmm. equipped with various instruments of torture and bondage, this marked a new level of premeditation and a deeper level of sadistic planning. He began recording audio tapes in which he described the acts he intended to commit on his victims. That not only demonstrated a disturbing level of anticipation, but also allows him to relive the experiences later. Ray's criminal activities become more ritualistic and organised. He followed a specific process of abduction, transport and subsequent torture. The rituals he established showcased his need for control and gradual refinement of his methods, and over time the violence and cruelty of Ray's acts escalated. He introduced new elements of pain, bondage and sexual abuse, further dehumanising his victims and satisfying his sadistic desires. Ray began involving accomplices such as his girlfriend and daughter in his crimes. This expansion of his criminal network indicated a growing sense of impunity and willingness to share his perverse world with others. Ray documented his crimes through photographs, videos and audio tapes, and as time went on, Ray's actions showed no signs of abating. He continued to seek out victims, subjecting them to increasingly horrific acts of torture and degradation. The gradual progression of David Parker Ray's criminal activities reveals a sinister journey from relatively minor offences to becoming one of the most notorious serial criminals in history. The evolution from early criminal behaviour to the construction of the toy box and the subsequent escalation of violence underscores the depths of his sadistic desires and his grown disconnect from societal norms. The toy box created by David Parker Ray was a chilling chamber of horrors, designed to fulfil his sadistic desires and serve as a place of torment for his victims. The room itself was a small, windowless, soundproof space deliberately crafted to facilitate his heinous acts. The toy box was organised with a cold, clinical ambience that contrasted sharply with the horrors that took place within the walls. The room was equipped with restraints and chains and hooks placed to facilitate bondage and torture. It also contained an array of tools and devices designed for inflicting pain and suffering. This included items like whips, chains, cuffs, gags, surgical instruments and restraints. These tools were arranged for easy access, underscoring Ray's twisted planning. Mirrors were positioned to ensure victims could see the full extent of their suffering, and cameras were also installed to record the atrocities, allowing Ray to relive his acts and potentially share them with others. The toy box featured medical stations where Ray would administer drugs to his victims, rendering them compliant and more susceptible to the sadistic mm -hmm. desires. Adjacent to these stations were areas designed explicitly for, explicitly for torture. Sorry. <laughs> Ray used audio tapes to describe in detail the horrors he intended to inflict on his victims. These tapes were played to disorientate and intimidate captives, further cementing the psychological trauma they endured.
I have actually read the transcript of this audio tape and there is no words at all that can describe how horrifying it was to read. Ray incorporated elements that amplified the terror experienced by his victims. These included hidden speakers emitting sounds of dogs barking and chains rattling, creating an atmosphere of impending dread. The toy box was a place where Ray stripped his victims of their humanity, subjecting them to degrading acts and making them feel utterly powerless. The presence of sex toys and explicit imagery further reinforced his intent to debase and dominate. Some victims find in reported finding diaries belonging to previous captives, a sinister reminder that they were not the first to suffer within the confines of the toy box. Describing the toy box as a gruesome and terrifying space barely scratches the surface of the horrors that took place within its walls. Survivors of David Parker Ray's horrific acts paint a harrowing picture of the unspeakable trauma they endured within the confines of the toy box. Their stories reveal not only the physical torment they suffered, but also the intricate methods of control and manipulation that Ray employed to maintain his dominance. Victims described being abducted by Ray and his accomplices, often drug and incapacitated. They were then transported to the toy box where they awoke in a nightmarish environment, disorientated and terrified. Ray's use of explicit and threatening language often recorded on audio tapes aimed to disorientate and intimidate victims. Hearing his voice describing the horrors he intended to inflict heightened their fear and vulnerability. Victims were bound and immobilised with various restraints and chains, rendering them physically helpless. This not only prevented them from escaping, but also added an element of psychological distress. Ray stripped his victims of their identities, referring them as slaves, and reducing them to the more mere sed- objects for his sadistic pleasure. This dehumanisation further eroded their sense of self and agency. Exposure to torture and pain, Ray subjected his victims to excruciating physical torture and often accompanied by the sounds of chains, whips and other implements. The intense pain was meant to break their will and reinforce his dominance. Victims were shown explicit images and videos of other victims enduring the similar torture reinforced the fear that they too would face the same fate. The manipulation heightened their desperation to comply with Ray's demands. He designed a toy box with its soundproof walls and restraints created an environment where Ray had to com- had complete control. Victims knew that resistance was futile, amplifying their sense of powerlessness. Ray also administered drugs to keep his victims compliant and disoriented. The victims' dependence on these substances both physically and psychologically reinforced their cap- captivity. Alternating acts of cruelty and kindness. Ray would alternate between acts of cruelty and then acts of kindness or leniency. This manipulation tactic created confusion and further undermined victims' ability to predict his behaviour and induced hopelessness. By prolonging the victim's captivity and subjecting them to continuous cycles of torment, Ray induced a sense of hopelessness. This emotional state made victims more susceptible to manipulation and control. Survivors' accounts underscore the extent of David Parker Ray's depravity and his calculated methods of control. This trauma they experienced within the toy box reveals the depths of human suffering inflicted by a predator who exploited psych ecological vulnerabilities and employed sadistic techniques to maintain his dominance over his helpless victims. So we're going to look at the strategies used to track down the killer and first it was actually one of the victims who survived Cynthia Vigil's testimony. Cynthia Vigil's escape and detailed account provided investigators with a critical starting point. Her description of the toy box and her experience at experiences within it gave law enforcement vital information to launch their investigation. Detectives worked round the clock to locate and interview other potential victims connecting their stories and corroborating details. Gathering survivors' accounts helped build a clearer picture of Ray's activities and methods. Law enforcement officers executed search warrants at Ray's properties. They collected physical evidence including restraints, tools and other items from the toy box which would later play a crucial role in the trial. 
Criminal profilers provided insight into Ray's possible motivations and patterns. This helped investigators anticipate his behaviour and make informed decisions during the investigation. Establishing trust and cooperation with survivors was essential. Victims were encouraged to share their stories and help investigators understand the extent of Ray's crimes. The case gained media attention, which put pressure on law enforcement to actively pursue leads and solve the case. It also led to public awareness that may have prompted witnesses to come forward. The combination of survivor testimony, evidence collection, collaboration between law enforcement agencies and psychological profiling played a crucial role in tracking down David Parker Ray and bringing him to justice. The investigation success hinged on the perseverance of investigators and their commitment to uncovering the truth behind the heinous crimes of the toy box killer. The audio tapes discovered in David Parker Ray's possession contained chilling and explicit recordings that provided a disturbing glimpse into his sadistic fantasies and the horrors he inflicted on his victims. On these tapes, Ray detailed his plans for torture, degradation and control often used an explicit language to describe the acts he intended to commit. The tapes revealed a level of premeditation and sadistic pleasure that was deeply unsettling and shedding light on the depths of his depravity. The explicit photographs found in Ray's possession were not only damning evidence of his crimes, but also served as a catalogue of his victim's suffering. These photographs captured the physical and emotional torment inflicted upon his victims in the toy box. The image depicted various stages of torture, bondage and degradation. These photographs were not only a testament to Ray's sadism, but also crucial pieces of evidence that corroborated survivor testimonies and illustrated the gravity of his crimes. In summary, the shocking audio tapes and explicit photographs found in David Parker Ray's possession were crucial pieces of evidence that played a pivotal role in the investigation and subsequent trial. Their impact extended beyond the courtroom, influencing public perception, sentencing considerations and our understanding of the depths of human depravity. The trial of David Parker Ray was a landmark legal event that captured the world's attention. Following his arrest, the legal drama unfolded in the courtroom where the full extent of his sadistic crimes was laid bare. Prosecutors presented evidence including survivor testimonies, audio tapes, explicit photographs and physical evidence from the toy box. The defence attempted to cast doubt on the evidence and questioned the credibility of the witnesses. The trial's dramatic proceedings and shocking revelations and emotional impact on everyone involved became a central focus of the media coverage. In 2001, David faced sentencing for his actions and on the 2nd of November 2001, Ray was found guilty on multiple counts, including kidnapping and sexual torture. Ultimately, David Parker Ray was sentenced to 224 years in prison. Due to the severity of his crime and the heinous nature of his actions, it was clear that he would spend the rest of his life behind bars, and the judge's decision reflected the gravity of his offences and the need to ensure that he would never again have the opportunity to harm others. It is worth noting that David passed away in 2002 due to a heart attack, which meant he never did live to serve that full 224-year term that he had been sentenced to. Let us remember the survivors who bravely shared their stories and the law enforcement professionals who worked tirelessly to bring justice. And I want to thank you all for listening to my first ever podcast. It isn't perfect, but hopefully we can improve as time goes on. Take care, guys. Bye.